Hello students, in this video we'll compute the efficiency of the sample variance of draws from a normal distribution. Let's suppose that x1, xn are draws, are normal, independent, identically distributed draws from an n mu sigma squared distribution. What I'm going to do in this problem to make my notation a little bit uh, consistent with the ordinary information is I'm going to call this sigma squared theta, right? So we're going to try to estimate theta, okay? So what is the efficiency? Recall that S squared, which is 1 over n minus 1, the sum, j goes from 1 up to n of x, j minus x bar quantity squared, the sample standard deviation, the sample variance over here is an unbiased estimate, estimator of theta, right? And we also know that n minus 1 s squared over theta is chi squared, okay? We'll use that in, in earlier part of this video, okay? Great. So what I want to do now is I want to give you the information, right? So what's our distribution, our f of x and with respect, I'm just going to think of this as theta, is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 pi. It's ordinarily sigma squared, so I'm going to put a theta over there, e to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared, typically, but that's just going to be a 2 theta, right? So let's log this in order to compute the information. So the log of f of x and theta is going to be equal to what? It will be a negative 1 half the log of 2 pi theta, and then minus x minus mu squared over 2 theta. Great. All right. And so now let's recall what the information is. So the information, the Fisher information, i of theta, is negative the expected value of the second derivative, the second theta derivative of this expression. So you can do two theta derivatives of this thing over here. So let's do two theta derivatives. Okay, so what's the first theta derivative? Let's see, so I'm going to have a negative 1 half, then a 1 over 2 pi theta, and then times 2 pi. So 2 pi is going to cancel out over there, and you get negative 1 half of theta. But do a theta derivative of this thing over here, this is like theta to the negative 1, right? So this thing over here is like this whole thing, x minus mu squared over 2 is just a constant. It's really theta to the negative 1. So the negative 1 is going to come down over here, and we have a 2, so this is going to be a plus, plus x minus mu squared. Since the derivative of the theta to the negative 1 is going to be a negative theta to the negative 2, right? So that's going to turn into a what? Just a 2 theta squared down over here. So if we simplify this, what do we have? If we simplify this, it just becomes a negative 1 over 2 theta. And this is going to be a plus x minus mu squared over 2 theta squared, right? It's enough we do the derivative of this with respect to theta. So the second theta derivative over here, if I do the derivative with respect to theta again, what we get, this is going to turn into a 1 half theta squared, right? And then this thing over here, I'm going to have a negative 2. So the, remember, theta to negative 2 will differentiate to negative 2, theta to negative 3. So that 2 is going to cancel out. We'll get a negative sense. I'm going to have a negative x minus mu squared over 2. The 2 will cancel out over theta cubed like that. Excellent. So our 2 cancels. So we can just eliminate that. So let's eliminate that over here. So the 2 is going to cancel out. It's gone. Just get theta cubed. Beautiful. And so now, if I do the expected value of this thing with a negative sign, so the information, therefore, is what? The information is equal to the negative of this thing is going to be the expected value of just x minus mu, x minus mu squared over theta cubed, and then minus 1 over 2 theta squared, Great. So this, of course, the expected value, so if I do the expected value of x minus mu squared, that's just the variance, right? Because expected value of the random variable minus its mean squared is, de by definition, the variance. So this first number here is going to be theta over theta cubed minus a 
1 over 2 uh, theta cubed, theta squared. And so there's just going to be a 1 half, and then a what? 1 half, um, 1 half theta to the power of negative 2. Okay, great. And so now what can we say? So now that's our information. And so what does the Kramer Rao bow tell us? Kramer Rao. tells us that the variance of any estimator, like that, variance of any estimator, y, is always bigger than or equal to 1 over n times the Fisher information of the estimator, right? So in this case, what are we going to have? So we're going to have a 1 over, a 1 over what? So we're going to have a 1 over n times um, 1 half, and then theta to the negative 2. So that's the same thing as what? That's the same thing as saying a theta squared, theta squared over uh, 2 theta squared over n. 2 theta squared over n is going to be the bound, the, the kramer rao bound. Right, so now recall that what? So recall that n minus 1 over theta s squared is chi squared, n minus 1 degrees of freedom. We put that in, in a previous video. Therefore, what's the variance of this thing over here? So the variance of this guy over here, so n minus 1, so n minus 1 squared over theta squared is going to be equal to what? Uh, variance of s squared, variance of s squared is going to be equal to the variance of a chi is just going to be 2 n minus 1, right? So it looks like the variance of s squared is going to be what? One of the n minus 1 cancels out, and it looks like I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a 2 theta squared over n minus 1, okay? And the kramer rao bound is this, right? So the variance of s squared of our estimator is 2 theta squared over n minus 1. And this number over here, if I make the denominator smaller by subtracting 1, that makes the whole expression larger. So this is strictly larger than what? This is strictly larger than 2 theta squared over n, which is exactly equal to what? Which is exactly equal to 1 over n times the Fisher information of theta. And so in other words, this is not as small as possible, so this is not an efficient estimator, but it's asymptotically efficient. Because if I look at the ratio of this and this, the ratio of our variance over the actual kramer rao lower bound variance is the efficiency. And so we see the, we see the efficiency is going to be what? Is going to be n over n minus 1 or n minus 1 over n, depending on which way you want the efficiency to be bigger than or bigger than 1 or less than 1. It doesn't really matter. It's sort of irrelevant. I, I really about the asymptotic properties. But I know that n minus 1 over n tends to 1 is n tends to infinity. So as n gets very, very large, this gets, becomes asymptotically efficient. Thank you very much.